वेलकम टू लेक्चर वन ऑफ डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स ए आई टू जीरो सेवन इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल स्टार्ट यूनिट वन इन दिस यूनिट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मोर ओवर वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू डू सम रिविजन ऑफ द टॉपिक्स विच यू हैव लर्नड इन योर प्रीवियस सेमेस्टर टू स्टार्ट विथ दिस लेक्चर द थिंग्स विच वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस लेक्चर आर द टाइप्स ऑफ सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम्स विच आर देयर इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स सो वी विल सी that what are the various type of signals and systems we are not going to see all the signals and systems in detail but we are only going to see some basic signals and systems after that we are going to see the advantages of the most fundamental type of signals and the systems which are used to process those systems those signals that is the digital and the analog systems then we will see the various type of number systems and the reasons because of which we have to discuss the various type of number systems because in this course and in the earlier course you might have studied various type of number systems so we are going to find or see the reasons because of which you have to see so many number systems then we will see how to convert a given number in a number system to another number system then we will see the various arithmetic operations which can be done on any number in the any number in any number system later on we will discuss the complement method for to be used in computers so this complement method is used in computers to perform the basic operation of subtraction even without using the subtractor so just by the operation of addition how we can do subtraction so we will see that in hours and r minus 1s complement so to start with let's have the basic historical view of the digital revolution so the digital revolution started somewhere in the year 1950s and in the initial period of 20 years there were not much development in the field of digital electronics but the systems the digital systems which people started fabricating on the integrated circuits were of very few gates so after fabricating the circuits with small number of gates then later on people started fabricating whole microprocessors on the small area with the help of certain technologies and those systems were usually digital systems but presently what we can see is not only for very small applications these digital systems are used but nowadays they are used in almost all the applications which are 
right from the mobiles which we use, the computers, the satellites, okay, the traffic lights, the audio, video, the cameras. So this digital is nowadays used in every field. In almost all the electronic devices, we use this digital circuits in one way or the another way. So we can see that in just the span of 50 to 70 years, we have done a lot of development in the field of digital electronics. This digital revolution has almost, if not completely, substituted the analog circuits, but have replaced the analog circuits by digital circuits. So to move on, let's see that what is the basic difference between analog and digital signals and what, how these signals are used to process the signals. So, if we talk about the analog signals, then the basic analog signals are nothing but the signals which vary continuously. Okay, so the signal, if we see the graph, then we can see on the y-axis we have amplitude and on the independent axis that is on the x-axis we have time. So what we can see is that the signal is continuous that is it is without break. There is no break in the signal and it is available at all the times. Moreover it is having it can have any value any value on the amplitude side. So such a signal which can have any value in the amplitude side whereas it is available at all the times so then those signals are called the analog signals. Whereas the other signal which we are more concerned in this course is digital signal. Digital signals are not like the analog signals which are available for all values but the digital signals are available for only some discrete values. Only some discrete values the digital signals are available. If the digital signal is available for only two levels then such a signal is called a binary signal or a digital signal and this signal may be continuous or discrete in time as well. So continuous in time and continuous in it may be continuous in time or discrete in time. So the signals which are continuous in time which are available at all the times but can only take some values, not all the amplitude values. Such signals are called digital signals. Digital signals are usually in this course we are going to represent by only two levels. The two levels may be called as 0, 1 or on off levels. These digital signals are used for processing or are used as the input signal for digital systems. So the digital systems are the systems which processes digital signals. The digital signals may be in the form of pulses or in the form of instantaneous values. So if it is an instantaneous value then you call it then it can have a discrete value obviously 
but an instantaneous value but it can have the continuous value also continuous in time but only discrete in amplitude so the digital signals may be in the form of pulses as you can see in the diagram now as i have told you that as there are basically two type of signals which are analog and digital signals so the systems which we use to process this signals are called if we are using analog systems so the analog systems are the systems which can process only analog signals whereas the digital signals are the signals which can process digital signals it cannot take all the values but it can take only a few discrete values these discrete values as i have told you earlier as well can be in the form of logic levels these logic levels are zero can be denoted by zero one on off true false or by any other way you want to denote it so in this course we are not very much concerned about the analog systems or the analog signals but we are very much concerned about the digital signals and the digital systems in this course we are going to design a few of digital a few very few and a very simple digital systems so this digital signals as i have told you can be represented by two levels zero and one so ideally if we consider then there can be two levels two ways to represent the logic if we represent the logic as low by zero and the high value of the logic by one then we call it a positive logic whereas if we represent the high value that is let's say if the high value is 5 volt by a zero whereas the lower side value that is let's say 0 volt is represented by 1 then such a logic is called negative logic moreover both the logics are useful and are used in the system design but usually people use positive logic and positive logic is also easy to understand many a times but in some applications we have to or we may have to use negative logic so as i have told you that here in this diagram you can see there are only lower value zero and the higher value plus 5 volts for positive logic but in the real world these values are not exactly 0 and 5 but they lie in a certain range if the signal lies in fact in a certain range then also we normalize it to 0 or to 5 then those signals are called digital signals what i mean by this point is that let's suppose you have defined certain lower range let's say 0 to 1 volt so if your signal lies in this range between 0 to 1 volt if the signal is 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.5 0 0.7 in fact 0.9 then that signal 
up to 1 volt will be treated as 0, will be rounded to 0. So then all the signals which lie between 0 to 1 volt will be treated as 0. Whereas if you have defined a certain higher range, certain range in the, on the higher side, let's say that range is also of 1 volt. So if that range is of 1 volt, let's say the range is from 5 volt to 4 volt, you have defined as the higher voltage. If this, if any voltage will, fa will fall in this range of 4 to 5 volt, then we call it or we round it to the 1 volt. So the signal will not have, will not, cannot take all the values of uh, between the 0 and 1 volt on the lower side or on the uh, between 4 to 5 volts on the higher side but it will always be rounded to the nearest 0 or the 1 so such a signal is called is be, uh, will become your digital signal so this representation is your digital representation so now we will discuss that what are the reasons because of which digital systems were able to replace almost all of the analog systems. I shouldn't say almost all of the analog systems because analog systems are also in use in the current era. But mostly, most of the times we use digital systems. Analog systems are useful but only for some applications. And the reasons are very well known. So the basic or the foremost or the most important reason because of which digital systems were able to replace analog system is the noise immunity provided by the digital systems. So the, the thing which I have discussed in just now that is if your signal lies in a certain range, then it can be treated as 1, can be rounded as 5 volt or